friends, this is McBirdie, and welcome back to another episode of Cinderella Phenomenon. This is getting kind of crazy, because apparently Rod does not want to break his curse. So we're not really sure what's going to happen, but I guess we're about to see. So something different is happening. Today is Fiorica's wedding day, and also the day Rod is destined to die. Sir Mithros explained his plan briefly last night. Man, I don't even know if I remember their voices. I hope I do. He told me that he would have a valuable item delivered to Rod that he would need to use to break his curse. He further explained that it was something he would need to use after the wedding. I tried to question him further, but he disappeared before I could, saying that he needed to start his preparations. I do not completely trust him, but I am running out of time and have no choice right now. The royal family has left the palace to attend Viorica's wedding. It is unusual for the king to attend another noble's wedding, but Viorica is an exception given that she is one of Rod's and Emmeline's best friends. Despite Sir Mithras's reassurance, I am still restless. Sir Mithras told me that everything would be alright, that Rod would not instantly die the moment Viorica got married. But why must his involvement be reserved for a time after the wedding? Why does he not act now? Someone looks like they're in a bad mood. Dolores suddenly stands before me, smirking. Her appearance shocks me so badly, I nearly drop the dishes in my hands. What impeccable timing. We've heard from the prince about Mithros. No wonder I was iffy about the man. I should have realized he was the witch. Do you know him? Yes, I do. Delora walks closer and places both of her hands on my shoulders. Listen to me, princess. I am warning you. Stay away from Mithros, do you understand? That man is a sly devil. He cannot be trusted. I take a deep breath to still my rapidly beating heart. I hope I will not regret asking for his help. Princess, I need you to promise me that you will stay away from Mithros. Yes, of course. Good. For the time being, I will resume my investigation. If I'm lucky, I'll find out what Mithros hopes to accomplish. Actually, he is not in the palace right now. He went with the royal family to attend a wedding. A wedding, huh? How unusual. I can only assume he must be there at the wedding to help Rod. Well then, better make use of his absence while I can. I'll see you later, princess. When I am left to my own thoughts, my mind returns to the issue of Rod's curse. Sir Mithras mentioned a similarity with the fairy tale, which means I may have a chance of finding out more. I decide to go to the library where I have the time to pick up the book. I am now on my way back to my quarters with the book in hand when I see Rod walking toward me from the other side. His eyes are fixed on the floor, so he does not notice me as I approach. Rod? He is still alive. Does that mean Sir Mithras has succeeded? Oh. It's just you. Rod's voice still comes from Sebi. The realization instills a deep fear inside of me. He is still cursed. How much time does he have left? Much to my surprise, Rod actually smiles at me. The smile is forced, however, and does not reach his eyes. He looks crestfallen. I'm fine. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. But I'm tired, Lucette, so for tonight, I just want to rest. Good night. Without waiting for my answer, Rod begins to walk away. A strange heaviness hangs on my chest. Why do I feel like this is the last time I will see him? I glance down at the book in my hands, then slowly open up to the last page of the Little Mermaid fairy tale. I start reading from the section where the mermaid's sister explained how to get her fins back. Take this knife. Before the sun rises, you must plunge it into the heart of the prince, and you will be a mermaid once again. Yikes. The book falls from my hands and collapses to the floor. I stare at it, dumbfounded. Wait, this means... Rob needs to kill Viorica? Then the item that Sir Mithros mentioned earlier... Could it be the knife? I need to find him. I turn and start running in the direction of Rod's room in hopes that I will still be able to catch Sir Mithros there. When I come to the end of the hallway, however, it is not Mithros who stands by Rod's door. Emmeline? Emmeline is slowly walking in the direction of the throne room. Her movements seem oddly mechanical. I rush toward her. Emma- Princess Emmeline! Where are you going? Must- 
go to Rod? Why is she going to the throne room? Rod is back in his room. My eyes catch on something shining in Emmeline's hand. Oh, she has the knife. My heart nearly stops when I see that it is a knife. Emmeline, what are you... If he kills his beloved with this blade, his curse will break and he won't die. It is as if she's in a trance. Is this Sir Mithros' doing? Is she under one of his spells? Emmeline, snap out of it! Emmeline starts walking again, ignoring me. When I try to approach her again, thinking to steal away the knife, a shadow suddenly comes to stand between us. Varg looms in front of me, smirking. Where did you come from? Let me through, Varg! No can do, princess. Don't you want to save the prince? I... I look at Emmeline, who has not even turned to glance at us. I glare at Varg, who is still standing in my way, grinning. Step aside, Varg! Ah, feisty. You are a far more interesting princess than your stepsister. I try to sidestep, but Varg follows my motions. I try again and again, but he just thwarts my progress. He holds his hands up in the air, eyebrows raised. Tell me, what would you do if I did let you go? Would you stop him from killing the girl? Rod would never kill her. He would never do anything to harm the person he loves. He refused to do it, and he has no reason to do it now. Varg is silent for a few moments as he considers. Interesting. He steps aside and bows. Go ahead, then. You are letting me go? I would like to see this play end as it may, without any strings attached. Okay. Chapter 10, Silent Farewell. When I push open the door, I find Rod kneeling down. Emmeline lies on the floor in front of him, unconscious. Emmeline! She's fine. She's just asleep. Something glitters in Rod's hand. Even from this distance, I know that it is the same knife Emmeline was holding earlier. Out of the corner of my eye, I see someone slouched against one of the pillars. Viorica? I rush to her side, then sigh in relief when I see the gentle rise and fall of her chest. She's still alive. How... how did she get here? It was Sir Mithras's plan. I remember walking back to my room after talking with you. I blacked out, and when I came to, I was already in here with Viorica. I've already checked on her. She seems to be under some kind of sleeping spell. M came in just a few moments ago, passed me the knife, and then simply collapsed after begging me to kill Viorica. I think Em is... under a spell as well. Rod glances down at the knife in his hand, expression glassy. Em almost convinced me. She pleaded that I not leave any of them behind. It's not as if I want to die and leave my family, but... He stares at the knife for a few moments, then curses as he slams his fists into the ground. I can't kill her. Why would Sir Mithras want me to do this? Guilt floods my chest, making it difficult to breathe. I was the one who asked Sir Mithras to help Rod. He said he knew how to break his curse. But I did not realize that in order to break his curse, he needed to kill the person he loved. I relied entirely on the story Emmeline told me, and that was my biggest mistake. I should have read the full fairy tale. I could never kill her. Such a shame. Sir Mithras emerges from the shadows, looking at us with disappointment. To break his curse, Prince Rod must kill his beloved with the knife his sister has brought him. Just like in the fairy tale. Mithros turns to Rod. And here I thought that your sister might be able to change your mind. You were, after all, supposed to do this of your own accord. I was wrong. I shouldn't have underestimated your stubbornness. Casting a spell on you would have resolved this problem entirely. Why are you doing this? Well, Sir Mithros shifts his gaze to me. Rod follows his gaze to me and raises his eyebrows. There is no use lying to him now. I... Ask Sir Mithras to help me break your curse. You what? I didn't know that you were meant to kill Viorica. I... Rod shakes his head, his face marred with disappointment. Anyone who tries to help me will inevitably make things harder for me, he said. I wanted to help you, Rod. I've already made up my mind. If you really want to help me, then please respect my decision. Please. Shame. And here I thought I would be witnessing a dramatic finale tonight. Sir Mithril starts to walk away. I'm about to chase after him, but then I realize that there is nothing else he can do. Rod has made his decision. 
I feel my heart plummet as I slowly nod at him. So, there really is no other way. I could never break my curse like this. Viorco is my first love. And my good friend. And besides that, my love for her faded a long time ago. She's been... replaced. You've been my beloved for quite some time already, Lucette. But it doesn't matter, does it? I will die soon. Rod. I feel a heavy weight on my chest, as if some force is crushing my heart. I am sorry. I promised myself that I would save your life, but I... I failed. I blink back the tears that are brimming in my eyes. Rod stands, then moves over to stand before me. He places a hand on my cheek. You've done nothing wrong, Lucette, so please don't blame yourself. What did I expect to happen? Even if Rod had killed the orchid today, he would have carried that burden for the rest of his life. And all because I asked a witch to make him do something he did not want to do in the first place. Rod reaches for Sebi and places him in my hands. Once the clock strikes 12, I'm going to disappear. It's really a shame that I'll be disappearing on your birthday. It would have been nice to celebrate this one with you. Wow, this is so sad. Promise you'll take care of my family for me. There must be another way. You cannot go just yet. I'm sorry, Lucette. I cannot even bring myself to consider what is happening. Panic engulfs my senses as I stare at Rod, who is becoming translucent. Oh my god, weird! Rod, you are... If only I could be with you and everyone else just for a bit longer. Despite the fact that his words waver, when Rod looks at me, his smile is bright and warm. My vision blurs as tears gather in my eyes. I like you, Lucette. If we'd had more time together, I think I would have grown to truly love you. In the next instant, his body has dissolved into soft orbs of light. The light gathers in the air, then begins to fade. Aww. I am so sorry. Did I make a bad decision? Is that why? That sucks. Yes, bad end. Well, fuck you, game. <laughs> I can't I can't know what the right decisions are. I know it gives you clues, but I was trying to just pick Merman's remain. Thanks, I got an achievement for that bad end. Wah, wah. Oh, well, I hope you guys liked this episode, even though it ended on a sad note. If you did, make sure you leave a big thumbs up down below. And if you like the series and you want to see me play it again and get the good ending, or actually, I might make that a quick thing, because there's other characters I want to check out. But if you want me to continue, leave a big like down below. And if you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe to my channel. That way you can keep up with more episodes as I put them out. So thanks again, and I will see you in the next, hopefully not as depressing, episode. Bye!